Hello and welcome, as usual, to the Geek Club. And the other night I was having a few drinkies and the old wine and watching a few episodes of The Computer Chronicles, which is freely available online. I know, you need to get out more. But I saw this. When this organization was originally conceived in 1983, it would have taken a mainframe to do what we're doing now on the 486s. Matt Costello is systems administrator at the Center for Money and Politics, a research organization in Washington whose clients are political candidates and news organizations. They maintain a three gigabyte database of people who give money to federal candidates. They just switched to ALR 486 computers, which run under OS2 and are connected to a Gupta SQL server. Which got me to thinking. 8666 megahertz. Hmm. Can I put OS2 warp on this? And after a quick search on the internet, I found this website which has all the images. And I thought, hmm, hmm. let's uh, try this out because I have never used OS2 warp. I always thought it was sort of IBM equipment specific. I'm happy men smiling all the way in his service to mankind. That's why we are so gay. <laughs> Technically it is, but yes, uh, for those who don't know about OS2 Warp, it was in initially developed by Microsoft and IBM together and was going to be in the marketplace as not a direct competitor to Windows. But the two companies couldn't agree on the market positions and they split and OS2 Warp, which is version 3, uh, was released in 1994. Now, it's not with it being IBM specific and IBM file formats, it's not a clear case of just inserting disks and it loads up. No, there's more to it than that. So, let's get into this. Alright, the first problem you've got is there are three floppy disks and a CD to burn to get this across to your computer. Now, the CD is just an ISO, so you can just burn that using whatever technique you do for ISOs. The floppies are a little bit different because they have the IBM uh, XDF file structure. Now. I've already done the install disk, but there are others. So, if I, what I've had to do, I'm just opening the drive on the 386 here, the 486. Right, I have bought across those files on CD, because they're too big for normal floppies. That's one of the differences with the file formats. And if I look on E, CD E, well, E, yeah. We have disk one, disk two, and install A. I've already got install A installed, and there's a little program called XDF Copy. You will need that uh, to do this. So what you do? I've got my CD there. I've got one in A. So if I go C. XDF, which is another file I've copied over from, uh, copied over from the internet. That file is not easily available, so I've got a link below to a, file, a place where I've put it for you. So if I go XDF copy C, sorry, no, no E, backslash uh, disk zero one dot image. And then say A, insert the target disk and drive A. Uh, I've now got three of these, so I'm going to need some labels. But press any key to continue. Ooh, track none, track zero cannot be formatted. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, format A, is format this disk before we go any further. And uh, I'll be back. Right, sometime later, due to uh, a couple of disks not working for this, <clears throat> uh, 
you can see what it does. So it, it writes the image and then it verifies. Now that's good because often it will write the image no problem, but it's when it verifies that it shows the disc is rubbish. Now we have created our discs. Good idea if you've got labels. Just to remember to label them up or else, uh, yep, it's going to be a nightmare remembering which disc is which. So we have those labelled, we have our disc with our ISO. Now this computer has Windows 3.1 and DOS 3 6.22 installed. I don't wish to uh, destroy that installation, so fortunately this computer also has a second hard drive. So I'm going to disconnect the main hard drive, set the second hard drive as master and we'll install it onto there. Okay, right, we've convinced it uh, to boot without its primary drive done. So, let's, uh, we've got OS 2's uh, install disk in A, and we're going to uh, boot off that, and aha, it's starting, and see what happens. Now, I did test this uh, a while ago on DOS, and uh, it does take a short while to boot up, so I'll be back in a second once we to the first screen. All right, okay, we are back, and uh, this is a big, glorious, big blue, blue screen uh, for OS 2 Warp version 4. Okay, it's version 4, not 3, so I thought. Copyright uh, 97, 1996, so this is 1996 version. Remove the diskette from uh, the, the diskette, ooh, posh, from drive A, and insert diskette 1 be disk zero one and press enter now hopefully this system will recognize the fact it's still got a hard drive in there hmm could be interesting and use that as the primary drive we'll see that's very pretty uh, in real life it's all spotty spotty little black spots everywhere so it looks quite nice looks like something Windows 95 would do although yes it is the same age but Okay, we'll let it do its stuff and uh, be back in a moment. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, hmm. Maybe I need to go through the BIOS and tell it about the hard drive because it wouldn't let me last time, so we'll try that one. Uh, let's see. What happens if I just. Nope, won't let me do bugger all. So I'll take this floppy out, reset, and press F1. See if it'll let me in the BIOS. So it wouldn't let me in the BIOS without the second thingy. What a load of rubbish I shall be. I went back. Right, here I am in the BIOS and we're having a bit of fun because it won't let me choose any hard drive that matches uh, D. That matches that one so I'm going to have to install this over DOS unfortunately and Windows but I don't mind I can reinstall Windows and passes a few hours <laughs> so just doing the auto detect here set everything up so this one doesn't have a I think this is already set up the battery on the BIOS is flat, and it's one of those chip, but eh, it's something I don't really need to replace. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install it over the existing operating system. Aren't I a bad baba? So what I have to do is make sure everything's working. Yep, everything's going. So I'll switch this off, put the cover back on. And then we'll reboot it on this floppy and I shall rejoin you at the point where we left it last time. And it appears this time we are in luck because it's asking for this too. So we shall give it exactly what it desires. This two. Off we go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
you are shitting me. It appears that this too isn't working. What a total loss. Hmm. Gonna have to redo dust too, aren't I? Bastard. Excuse my French. Okay, I was getting... Oh. Okay. Uh, getting a little bit concerned there because... Uh... Right. Uh, yeah. That uh, wouldn't install off disc 2 initially. I've rebuilt disc 2 and uh, seems happy. So, insert the OS2 warp CD-ROM into the CD drive. I do believe that is still on this computer over here. It is, so we'll just eject that. Eject. This is a, another concerning spot because we do not know whether it will be happy reading this disc. So, just wait for it to come out. This one and this one close. Cross fingers, cross other fingers, cross toes. Give it a few moments to read it. Okay, locating requested files, please wait. Oh god. It is written. It is written as an image. So, um, let's have a look. <coughs> That's a pain. All right. Okie dokie. Mm, I wonder if it needs to be that file structure. In which case, uh, we'll get to school because this can't burn. Hmm. Hmm. I'll be back. Right, I am thinking here. Oh no, don't do that very often. Uh, we tried to look at the contents of the CD drive using the command prompt, which this can drop into. But because this hasn't booted from DOS, it doesn't have the CD drivers. So I'm wondering if I take out install disk, reboot with DOS, so it's got the drivers, it might be able, might be able then to read the CD. The only thing there is, will this install from inside DOS? I suppose there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's have a look. CD-ROM driver installed. Yep, just looking at the CD. But, hey, right, so, uh, it's the D-I-R-A. Can DOS read it? It can. D-I-R-A, uh, 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 wide. Hmm. Ah, XDF copy. Hmm. OS2 boot? No. Ted IT? Hmm. Hmm. Systeminst.com. Try uh, sys install TX. Install TX, new, poo, CD, OS boot, yep, hmm, this is uh, fun isn't it, dead it, what's that, sorry, what am I doing, hey, duh, get the backslash, OS boot. See if that does anything. No. A. DIR slash Y. OS 2 boot. No. Hmm. Nah. Oh, we got something. Process my PG and correct creation operating system. 
hair or poo. So, uh, we can't really do this, can we? Because it doesn't know how to read the flop, the, oh, the CD ROM. Poo. Right, it is a few days later, and having no luck with this OS2 Warp 3, well, OS2 Warp, we even tried on the recommendation of Paul Smallman trying to replace the drive. But when I put this one in, with the power cable on, this boots. But as soon as you put the IDE cable in, uh -uh, it's having none of it. No power to it at all. It's weird. This is a DVD ROM though, but I have no idea what's going on there. So, the last option we have here is to see if we can just install the entire thing from the hard drive, if that will work. We're not holding up much hope, but it may. So what I'm going to do is format the hard drive, uh, copy all the files from the floppies onto there and see if it will boot off that. Uh, this is not a big thing because I can rebuild this computer. I already have a video of rebuilding this from scratch, so it can be done easily. So, uh, yes, I'm going to try that now. Wish me luck. Right, I formatted the hard drive, uh, placed all the files from A disks onto it, uh, tried reboot, mm, wasn't having none of it. So I booted off an MS DOS boot floppy, looked what's on the A drive. Uh, tried to get it boot off various things. No, not having any of it. So, at the moment, I am completely stuck as to how to get OS2 Warp onto this computer. Uh, it could be just that it doesn't understand this uh, CD drive that we've got in here. So, do you know any ways around that? Uh, it's a Panasonic thing coming on. Uh, yep, it is a Panasonic, so, hmm, don't know a way around this. If you do, then please let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll try and proceed to get this to work. In the meantime, I'm going to put DOS and Windows back on this bugger. So, if you enjoyed this video, then please like it, and you can join us in our Facebook group where you can discuss this also. And uh, we're also on Twitter, and if you wish to support the channel, you can do so through Patreon. Other than that, thanks very much for watching, and hopefully we can follow this up, get this working, and review OS2 Warp on a real 486. Thank you very much for watching. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy.